Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel, tech lead and partner at Westfall. And today I'm responding to a comment they got from James Robert right over here. And uh, in a nutshell, James is asking that if you can do everything that Laravel can do in PHP core, right? Why do you need to add a framework to increase your complexity, slow down your application, make things just a lot more harder when you can just do it in pure PHP, right? And I really love you guys sending out these comments out there that I can understand, you know, some of the questions that you have. Weighing out the pros and the cons, it's overwhelming that you use a uh, PHP framework. So today I'm going to give you five reasons why you should use a PHP framework. The first point is that you are always using a framework. Unless you're going to use your code one time and throw it away, Anytime you reuse any of your own code, right, that is a framework. It's a set of code that you're reusing. So whether you use somebody else's code or whether you use your own, that is already a set of codes and uh, plugins and things like that that form a framework. So there's no getting away from the framework. It's like the matrix, right? And even if you're out of the matrix, you're still in the matrix. But this is funny that people say, I don't want to use a framework. I'll code everything from scratch and then they go in and they dig out their own codes, their own functions, they've copied some stuff on Stack Overflow. All this stuff is so-called a framework. The minute you piece more than, you know, maybe uh, 100 lines of code, that is a framework, or however you wish to call it. So the first point I always say is, if you're reusing code is a framework, by any other name, it's still a framework. You can't get out of it. The second reason, and probably the most important reason as a professional tech lead, right, is speed of development. So you don't want to be spending a lot of your time reinventing the wheel, reinventing concepts that are already proven. So when you're a professional, especially in a dev house, right, you want to get a project done as soon as possible, as efficiently as possible. You don't have time to drink coffee and reinvent the wheel and try out new things. You have to use things that are tried, tested, and quick to deploy. And that's where a framework really comes in. You're going to use structures. You're going to use CSS that's already there. You're going to use plugins that are already there. So this really speeds up the development time if you're able to pull this from left, right, and all over the place. If you had to recreate all this by scratch, by hand, you're going to use up a lot of time. Clients are not going to pay you for that amount of time. So that is a very important part. At a certain point, most of the projects, right, you will find that the speed loss that you get by putting more, it's probably worth using the framework. Now, the second part about this uh, idea of speed, right, is that a framework can either be too little where you have to add or too much where you have to subtract. Over time, I've used all sorts of frameworks, right? And I've found that uh, while we use Agile in phase one, you know, the smaller, lighter framework like Slim would have been okay. But these things tend to grow in the future. They need more functionality. And then you end up having to stack more stuff onto it. So I find that it's a lot more useful if you go a little bit larger and then do uh, what you call subtractive of it. Just use less of the features. These days, you take uh, tree shaking, um, on-demand coding just in time, it's not much of a performance hit. So point two, speed of development, very, very important. Point three is best practices. So as I said in the first point, if you build your own framework, you are your own core development team, and you might be one of the best software developers on the planet, right? but you may not always be in touch with the top practices, best practices in software development. You might be uh, you know, missing some stuff in security. What happens is that in the framework, remember you've got about a few hundred people working on the core, say Laravel, you've got a core team, and you've got thousands of people using the framework who are gonna be commenting, who'll be on the forum, who'll be saying, what about this? What about 7.3? What about all this kind of stuff? So what you actually get is a more security, more battle-hardened, tested framework rather than your own DIY framework. And that, to me, is a huge amount of benefit. Uh, more often than not, I have gone into some of these code and read the documentation and say, gee, man, that is a really good way of doing that. Uh, for example, a long time ago, I remember API usage. 
I was building my own uh, curl classes and then I went into Laravel and I saw this thing called Guzzle, right? I mean, I could have used it outside the framework, but the fact that it was already uh, you know, widened to, to uh, Laravel encouraged me to say, hey, this is a pretty good idea, a pretty good class to use. And another thing is with the front end, like Vue.js, I use Exos. I mean, I, we were always looking for some sort of uh, replacement for calling APIs. And again, that was where I stumbled upon it. So there are a lot of the best practices where people have tried it out, tested, debated it, and then rolled it in. I've come by and I said, hey, you know, this is really good. I wouldn't have had the time to have figured this one out. So best practices is number three. Number four is very critical, especially if you're a tech lead level, much bigger than a single developer, which is onboarding. So you generally don't build projects by yourself. So you're gonna need somebody else on the team. You're gonna need uh, you know, multiple people, developers, designers, and all that kind of stuff. So it really helps building your team on speed if everyone's familiar with a framework. Now, this can help on multiple levels. So first of all, let's say I've got a new project in, right? If I can pick up a dev or a team member in my team who already knows the framework, they, I don't have to onboard them anymore. They know how the framework works. They know what to do in the thing. I don't have to train them for it. If you use your own custom code, as I said in point one, you'll have to explain to them how it works. Is it different from this? Is there any documentation for this? Uh, you know, how does that work? That's really, really key point on onboarding. That's one point, bringing in teams. Remember, we scale them up, we scale them down. Number two, Handing over projects, right? You've got a client, maybe if they've got their own set of developers, usually cheaper, not so good. They need to know what to do. So if they already had some uh, familiarity, if you can just hire them away. I've had some clients say, what do I have to do? And I say, look, just hire somebody with, uh, who've done PHP or Laravel, or one of these frameworks, we'll be able to hand it over to them in one month, rather than maybe three months where we have to train them, we have to hold their hands. So especially if you're a product manager, if you're running a tech startup, you want a lot of interchangeability of your team. You don't want someone who just knows this thing, built the whole thing from scratch, and then now he's gone. And maybe he's tracking in Brazil, you can't get hold of him, what are you gonna do, right? So onboarding, quick movements, uh, changing of your team, if it's a well-known framework or has at least a good community, say Laravel, E2, uh, Symfony, much easier to onboard people and you really want to look at this i've known clients right who've gone you know they thought about those wonderful complex frameworks with huge amounts of performance but they're having so much trouble hiring people because there's just not enough work outside these companies you know like golang who else is going to use that you know so hard to deploy so you're going to have a shortage of devs familiar with it you're going to slow down your onboarding it's going to jack up your cost Point five is another very critical one, which is support. So if you have a framework where you're the core developer and you're the one deploying it, when you run into trouble with your own framework, who are you gonna ask? You can't go on a Stack Overflow. You can't just type in the name of your unique framework. You have nobody else. Basically, you are your own tech support. And that can really, really slow down your development phase because you know you have to find from first principles where your, proper, your, your mistakes are. And as I said, in point two about uh, you know, the speed of deploying stuff, you don't have time to mess with this. And back to point three about best practices, what if you didn't do the best practice? What if you just missed it? You would have to re-engineer the whole thing from the beginning to try to refix your, your code. If you use an established framework that's already got thousands of developers down there, it's so easy. You just pop on the Stack Overflow, you're probably gonna find a problem you're going to find the solution in forums. You're going to find the solution. It's going to save you. It's going to save your team lots and lots of support time. And this comes into two, both two areas uh, of development, both the newbie people who you know, are going to ask them for very basic questions and the very complex uh, problems where they're going to ask something really complex and you have to dig in. Someone will probably already have had that answer if you use an established framework. So this is the real value of these five points using the framework. So I hope that has explained it and some of the considerations from a commercial point of view, why I think it's overwhelming towards using a framework. These days, frameworks are really good. 
And I think this should put that debate to rest. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.